Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and making some very good trades as per usual and let's get into it here. Uh, my name is Vicky, we're going to be doing a, uh, a recap of today's price action. I do these on Mondays, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays and sometimes I do them on Sunday night when I have time. When the future is open we get those new weekly candles. Uh, but for the time being, let's just keep going here and we can see that the SPY has technically hit my previous buy area and we have gone a bit of a bounce today. We actually had a nice day in the markets. Uh, they were up on decent volume, 86 million, but nothing to write home about. Uh, if I would have seen a, if I would to meet for me to have seen a definite bottom in the markets, it would have been on massive volume. Something like we've seen in the past, like in March, uh, when the Fed <coughs> stepped in here and we had a like over 140 120 yeah 157 million shares on a nice reversal and we saw it coming in on big selling volume as well so uh, as well so that you can see that this was serious panic and this was obviously you know this was this is real panic and this is real uh money buying back in at the bottom and what we're seeing right now is we're seeing decent volume selling like 100 million, 123, 121, 94, 115, and 107. Uh, but we're not seeing the same amount of volume buying it up. And now we'll take a look at Market Cipher and all that. But for me, the primary count would still be towards the downside. And again, we'll have to see if this extends to the three. Uh, 390 area to 380 so again this would be your first area to chance a long if this is the wave 4 top and we come back down in a wave 5 uh, so this would be your first area I'll mark the second area for you guys if you're going to be wanting to buy a little bit lower it would be right around <laughs> the 390 the 395 area will probably be the first one and then it could go all the way down uh, to the 385 okay so essentially around that area that would be your secondary area of support to get a bounce but the lower you go uh, in my opinion uh, and the quicker we get there the you know the harder it's going to be for the support to hold because it could be on panic and all that stuff and if you start to lose these two major levels and you start to go lower like 380s 37 sorry 37 37 <laughs> sorry 370 is on the spy then you're going to have a serious, uh, serious, serious problems. And this, this could really turn into a, a market crash scenario uh, where it's a waterfall sell-off. All right, now let's take a look at market cipher here uh, because we got some new daily candles. This is just Bitcoin, uh, but this is right here, the SPY. And again, we have been in, in, in deep red money flow. The weekly candle just printed a new candle here. Uh, for the spy and it's looking a little bit less bearish but still bearish overall we have a 12 and a minus four right so things appear to be still bearish for the spy the triple q's we have an 11 and a minus four especially you know after this big dip dip buy opportunity today a lot of people were buying the dip iwm the worst one of them out of them all uh seven and a two today so but you're now in you know decent red money flow and when I look at the monthly, it's just uh, god awful. So when you look at the IWM on the monthly and all the other indices, uh, they're looking very, very bearish. Uh, the NASDAQ actually managed to erase its red dot in a single day of pumping. So it just tells you how much delusion there is, uh, how, pe how bullish people want to be on tech right now, given how high the yields are and how bad things really are in the actual economy but you know if people want to be delusional and buy and buy and buy and hope for seasonality to come to save them then that's that's okay I mean I mean seasonality is is technically correct and it can come all right and it, you can get a big bounce from there but we'll have to see if the markets can hold up uh, with all these conditions that are pushing down the market if seasonality can actually uh, come to the rescue and hold everything up Okay, so right now we actually have a green dot on the daily on most indices. Uh, so on the, the Dow Jones, uh, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. So you just printed a green dot on this new candle on the futures. 
So we'll have to see if this one confirms and if this is a defin defin definitive low. If it is, and this turns out to be the bullish scenario that we're bottoming out here uh, around the 400 area and we're getting ready to go to new all-time highs uh, around like five, the 500, the 510 to 520 area and we go to these levels here, then this could turn into the worst case possible scenario ever where the B wave extends even more and then the crash will be even more severe. You will no longer be going to, to some, some nominal lows, maybe at 270 to 230. You will be going to, you know, maybe to 160 to even like low 2008 uh, levels here. And that would be, you know, your super uh, cycle top. And then your, the, the markets would be done for decades. Right, because the, uh, at that point, uh, the, condi the, the the when we get to here, the crash will be so bad, the conditions will be so bad in the economy, and they'll have done so much damage that it will be ir irreversible at that point. But anyways, uh, we're just looking to see if the markets can hold up. Right now, they bounced, and they actually retested resistance. This trend line is not 100% accurate, so don't just uh, I'll just trade off of it. Uh, I can adjust it just a little bit better if you want because technically it 417 on the spy was my resistance and if we broke back into it then in that case I would have uh, maybe stopped out of some shorts or actually taken profit on some of the shorts and just to see if the markets can bounce a little bit higher and re-enter some short positions then uh, but for the time being I'm still holding my positions and we'll see if the, the markets can take it up tomorrow. Uh, the futures are red right now, but it doesn't matter how they open. It matters how they close, right? And at the moment, when I look at the IWM, so let's just head over to the IWM because that's something that I really want to talk about. Uh, it is hanging in by a thread right now. Uh, it is at the 163 area. Uh, it has not taken out its lows. It was extremely close to taking out its, low, its new lows that it made. It dipped down once again. Um, and it's just getting so much pressure right now to sell. There is, I mean, maybe every hedge fund is trying to hold up the IWM at this point, uh, trying to save it because they know that if the IWM goes and it starts to break down lower and lower and lower, uh, this could cause a waterfall sell off in the indices. This could really start to capitulate things. And I'm, again, I'm pretty excited for tomorrow's close because we're going to get the new monthly candle. Uh, for not just the Nasdaq, but the S&P, the Dow Jones, and the Russell 2000. I'll post some updates inside the Discord for you guys. I did create a Discord for Hedgeline Trading. So if you guys want to come in and chat, you know, I post some of my trades during the day and I say, uh, be careful. Uh, you know, I <laughs> some, some, some of you are hoping for a pump. Uh, but if you guys want to join in, feel free. It's a free Discord. I just created it for people to come and join and talk. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm very concerned for what's what could be coming in the coming days. We have the Fed speaking, we have Apple earnings, and I believe we have another news event that I probably already forgot about. Uh, but there's a lot of geopolitical conditions at the moment as well. It's just too risky to, to be going uh, all in on buying the dip, in my opinion. I, th I think that you've broken too many levels, too many major support areas, and I'm even impressed and surprised of how fast we took out the 4200 area. I thought that would be an area of more of more significance and resistance. As we could probably see, we did bounce, uh, but then we just cut through it like butter. And you saw that the the uh, Aladdin and BlackRock's AI probably tried to s stop everything from dropping and save it for a couple of days, but the volume was just too much, and there was just too much, you know selling and it just pushed it down and again you can tell that there's almost no fear again no i repeat no fear in this market uh, this is why the vix keeps getting pushed down and then there's just so many dip buyers there's so many people loading up on calls uh at least the videos the, you know that are being posted by the big youtubers buy the dip just keep buying don't stop buying this is it we're getting this is your last opportunity to buy load up on calls because we're going to new all-time highs to me i think that's just a little bit irrational and delusional i think this is the the more likely scenario 
uh, that we're going to come back down in a wave one. And when we come back down to maybe the low 400s, to maybe 395 now, that's probably when uh, I am going to be, uh, and I'm going to be potentially buying. But again, this is going to be pending market conditions. Because if the market starts to implode and crash, uh, I will not be buying. I'll just be holding on to the positions that I have. And to say that it's it can it, it's not going to happen and it's it can happen, well, we're in the early stages of a potential market crash. This is this is how these things unfold. You can go back to two thousand eight and twenty twenty. Sorry, 20, yeah, two thousand two. Uh, this is how these things start to play out, right? Uh, let me just get back to two thousand two here. Very quickly for you guys. I think this was 1987, uh, 2002. Is this 2002? Yeah, this is 2002. But I gotta go all the way back on the daily time frame. There you go. So something very similar, right? O2. You came down, right, and you bounce back up. And you, you, you think that this is it, it can't go down and it just keeps going down and it bounces back up and you don't think it's, you think you're headed to no all time highs, the sentiment is extremely bullish and you just keep going down and down and down and down. Anyways, you guys can do whatever you want. I know some people are very delusional right now and they cannot fathom the market going down any lower because to them, this is the lowest. This is the... Things are too cheap. Things look too good. But when you look at the the mega caps, the Nvidia, the Meta, uh, they are in the stratosphere still. And these guys think that they're this is headed to one thousand eight hundred on on Nvidia. Tesla's going uh, to four or five hundred dollars. This is a huge bull flag. But really, Tesla is breaking massive levels here. Once he took out that two ten pivot. Uh, to me, that was a signal that Tesla was headed lower. Then you lost the 200. Second factor, and now you're headed lower in a potential uh, fifth wave here. You can see how small this wave four was. And now the fifth wave is potentially going to extend further uh, than anyone thinks. And it's going to be really painful for the people who are just going to keep holding and not going to sell. Maybe we can do some targets here to see where this could be headed. Uh, let me just take a look and let me just see here. There we go. So maybe right around the 150 area would be where uh, Tesla would be headed. But any any time before that, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be buying. I wouldn't even consider buying. But you can see that 150 area kind of lines up perfectly. Uh, with the bottom here 152 and it wasn't that accurate i just kind of just placed it there if we're going dollar for dollar uh, essentially maybe just around this uh, 152 to 150 area would be where you want to buy meta again same thing uh you had a huge down day very very significant uh then massive amount of dip buying keep buying don't stop buying buy the dip and then a huge topping tail today we'll have to see if that's the top and we start to reverse down. A uh, Google had a huge breakdown. Uh, you came to the 121, and then now you're retesting uh, this previous support as resistance. It was major resistance, and now it's retesting it as resistance once again. And just because you look at the RSI and say it's oversold, it's oversold. You gotta buy. You gotta buy. And then you know, for the same delusional people that are saying that, just because it was overbought, uh, right? doesn't mean it was a short it, it was a hundred percent short right because if you were to just short it here just because it was over so overbought or just here and you held it and you held it and you held it you would have been down 32 percent on that short position or you would have taken massive losses uh, on that short on on google right and the same thing applies now just because we're oversold doesn't mean things are just going to keep going up forever uh, they can remain oversold for a long period of time, longer than anyone. What you you know, longer than you think. And uh, now we're you know we're going to be getting into Apple earnings, and right now the chart looks very bad for Apple. You're retesting the 200-day moving average as resistance, and I do believe that tomorrow you know you might be a surprise day because everyone's loading up on calls, expecting the market to start mooning for no reason, 
uh, just bullish, bullish, bullish. It's so stupid to be bearish. Bears fear mongering crap. Uh, you know, they're making, they're so upset that there's shorts in the market and people are, you know, thinking the market will go down because they, they, it's, it's starting to burst their bubble. And it's really, it, it really is starting right now. We're at the peak of it. The people who are, uh, you know, extremely bullish right now, you need to, you need to be looking at this potential scenario. Oh, sorry, not this one, this one, this potential scenario that we can head lower, right? You need to factor it into your risk management. If you're just nonsensical and you can only look at one scenario, then it's not going to play out very well for you. That is all I can say. Anyways, uh, that's uh, that's all I have to say uh, today. If you guys want to join into Discord, links in the description. And uh, anything after that, uh, if you guys have questions or stocks that you want me to take a look at, uh, leave them in the description.